Hey, what's up everybody? This is Eric. I just wanted to share this quick uh, phone conversation I had um, with a gentleman named, well, he claims his name was Zach. He uh, had text messaged me a few weeks ago and basically wanted to, or said he wanted to uh, basically sodomize me. And um, I ended up texting him, as you'll see here, and I said, don't be a Pinkoski faggot. And you might be like, oh, Eric, why would you call him the F word? Well, because when somebody wants to uh, threaten to sodomize you, that's definitely somebody who's exhibiting the characteristics of a faggot. You know, just like the uh, guys, you know, back in the Old Testament, the, um, the guys of Sodom, when they surrounded the house that the two angels were at with Lot, those guys were faggots. And we've seen what happened to them. The Lord rained down hellfire and brimstone on those guys, you know, and he spared Lot and his two daughters. And, you know, obviously Lot's wife could have made it out, but she looked back to Sodom and she became a pillar of salt. So anyways, um, with that being said, I'm going to share the phone conversation I had with this guy. It's because I was like curious, like, who the heck is this person? You know, they got a West Virginia phone number. Very interesting. So, um, you know, I called or whatever and left the voicemail basically explaining how this was very weird that you would call or text me and say these very disgusting things to me i didn't find that very cool so uh the person actually did call me but they called me private which you know like he said you know he might have had an app on his phone whatever but it is what it is so i'm going to show you the text message here i at least try to censor out some of it so you can see what he said and then what i responded and then uh, the conversation that I ended up having with this young man and pray for him. He said his name is Zach. I don't know if that's his name. Um, but, you know, I think the conversation in itself, um, despite some weirdness, but I mean, it is what it is. I think the conversation in itself was a blessing. And, and at least he was told and shown the truth. Um, and, you know, I just wanted to share it with you guys. Um, because I didn't know what to expect when he called me. I'm like, you know, I'm going to record this because I don't know what to expect. Like, this is some weird stuff. He's calling me, you know, and, you know, I've already been, you know, this guy's talking about he wants to sodomize me. Like, that's disgusting, man. I don't, I don't go that way. I'm a happily married man. You know, I have a beautiful wife, three children. And, um, yeah, I mean, we have, we have a, a beautiful marriage. I'm very thankful for my wife, very thankful for my children. Yeah, sorry, it's pollen in the air. Got that time of the year in Georgia. You gotta wear a mask everywhere, you know. And and let, and let that be a lesson. Not everybody in Georgia who's wearing a mask is wearing a mask because of coronavirus. Some are wearing masks because of the pollen in the air because it's so heavy right now. It's so thick. I mean, I I work on cars for a living. I I detail and and you know everything on vehicles for a living. And I mean, as soon as you're done washing it, the pollen is already settling on it. As soon as you're done, you know, buffing and waxing it, the polish is all, or the pollen is already settling on it. Anyways, I digress. So I, I want you guys to just check this out and see the conversation I have with this young man, and that it was a. I think it was a blessing because at least he was showing the truth, and he's he's without excuse. You know, he's without excuse. But it was a blessing for him to see somebody you know, who's a Christian, who is against homosexuality, who's against sodomy, who's against the LGBTQ agenda, but yet still have compassion because they want to see this person's soul saved, despite what people say and think. No, I'm not an ally to the LGBT. No, I'm not yoking up with LGBT people. And, you know, many want to make the, fa the false accusation that I'm the most wicked street preacher they ever heard. If I was so wicked, I want to ask you this. Would I have the compassion to have a, um, some of it's partly, you know, partially edited uh, for good reason, but um, would, if, if I was so wicked, would I be able to have a 13 minute, even though this video, or this video, this portion of the video is going to be about 10 minutes, but a 13 minute conversation with this person, probably not, probably not, I, you know, most would have just rebuked him and left it at that, but you know. I want to see this person saved at the end of the day. I want to see them give their life to Jesus Christ because at the end of the day, that's all that matters is salvation in Christ Jesus, you know. And especially, you know, living in the times that we're living in, I think that's the most important thing right now. 
is that the gospel is going forward you know no matter who the person is no matter what the condition is you know no matter how they might act the gospel is going forward so god bless you guys um you know enjoy this share it and man may the lord's will be done for this young man in jesus name i pray amen Who, who is who? Who are you? I'm sorry. What's your name? I don't know. Like, I I texted you something about like I don't know, like sex. Yeah, that's pretty gay. Don't be soliciting me that kind of stuff. Why would you do that? Um, I don't know. How did you get my number? Um, Facebook. No, my number's not on Facebook. Who is this? What's your name? My name is Zach. So, so why would you solicit me and ask me some gay stuff like that? Um, that's just the kind of kind of who I am. Okay, but I'm not that way. Why? Why? Why would you do that? Well, how did you get my number? Cause I found it on Facebook. Where? Because this number's not on Facebook. Hang on, let me see if I can find it again. Did somebody post something that they shouldn't have been posting? Yeah, I just feel like, like, I don't remember, but I feel like I wrote it down from a comment that you posted. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I found it. I texted you that I was going to, you know, anally copulate you. That's disgusting. Um, I don't know, because he's a, he's a wicked devil. He's a pervert. Oh, so you mean like he might be like like me, but like repressing it? No, I'm, what I'm saying is he he's a, he's, a, he's a jerk who claims to be a Christian, and he's not, because I exposed him. And he's anti-LGBT to the fullest, which I mean, I'm against homosexuality, but he that's all he talks about all day, every day. Uh, well, I'm not surprised everyone is anti-gay. I don't live there anymore. It's just an area code. Hmm. So, you have no idea, so you have no idea how you got my number? I, I know if I got it on Facebook, but I don't remember where. <laughs> well, was that you that called me restricted last night? No, I didn't call you last night. Somebody called me at 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, uh, no, it wasn't me. And, uh, why are you calling me restricted now? Why am I calling you what now? Restricted. Oh, um, I think, like, in my phone I had, like, caller ID off. Oh, you have an app. So I forgot to switch that shit. No worries, I'm just... I'm just trying to figure things out because, you know, I'm trying to figure out who put my number out there because hardly anybody has this number. Yeah, but I know that I got it on Facebook. Like, I could swear that I got it on Facebook and it was through a comment that you posted on your own Facebook page. And what makes you think, though, that I would be open to something like that? I didn't think you would be. I just kind of was, I don't know, trying to mess with you or... So how did Something like so that. how did you find my Facebook? I mean, like, what, what, what is it a is it a comment thread on a particular thread? No. Um, so I found your YouTube channel, and then I found you on Facebook somehow. So what? How? And, and what exactly did you find on my YouTube channel? And what did and what did you like about my YouTube channel? Oh, I didn't like anything about your YouTube channel, but I just found some video of like. I don't know. I think street preaching at some event, some concert, maybe. Hmm. Interesting. So you were mm. basically just doing that just to mess with me? Yeah, well... Honestly, I don't know. I didn't know, like, if you... how you would react. Like, if you would... 
I don't know, like, it, I've heard of people, like, having repressed feelings if they are anti, like, LGBT or homosexual. And so, so I just, like, I try to think that everyone who um, uses, who's against it from the Bible is that way. That's just, like, a perspective I have. Yeah, for everyone. probably not a very good perspective because, I mean, that's what the Bible says when we go by what the Word of God says. And, um, you know, I'm a happily married man. Never, uh, never had any thoughts of homosexuality, and nor would I ever. Um, as a matter of fact, I actually go out and minister to homosexuals. Um, but what? But I called you a faggot. The reason why I called you that was because. You know, there, there's homosexuals who want help, and then there's people who say things like that and do things like that, and, you know, then I drop the F-bomb. Because not, not everybody who's a homosexual is a faggot. Makes sense? Uh, okay. Yeah, so, like, uh, a homosexual has, like, intention or interest in repenting is... Well, what? How, like... A Christian? No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, someone who doesn't, you know, glory in it and and you know, revel in it, but you know, are are you know, are somebody who wants to change, but maybe they're in bondage due to maybe they were sexually abused, maybe they, you know, were raised by just a mom and and all they seen was effeminacy. Maybe they were, you know, maybe you know something in the food, you know, altered their genetics, altered their DNA, because all this is possible. Maybe they picked up sodomite spirits from, from, you know, maybe they're, as to why a person is okay. homosexual. I got you. All right. So some people aren't going to be a homosexual, you know, because that's like, you know, they just love putting their private parts in places they don't belong. Yeah, the I mean, the truth is that, like, I am, I do feel like I am that way, um, honestly. Well, you know, in the Bible it says, it calls them abusers of themselves of mankind. You know why it says that? Um, no, but, I mean, that's an interpretation, like... I know that, like, a lot of people don't interpret that to mean homosexual. Well, do you, do you know what, do you know, well, and a lot of people are wrong, too. But do you know well, why, I know the context why it calls them of that. of themselves of mankind, though? No. Because it's abuse. It's not love. Okay. Well, the context of that verse is about, like, being washed by the blood of Christ or something like it I don't know it had like a whole slew of sins and then and so that was just one of them and so if so everyone could like be included in that verse well what it's what the, but what that's saying what that verse is saying is, is it's talking about that what Paul's writing to that church He's writing to that church, and he's telling them, some of you were like this, but you've been washed and cleansed by the blood of Jesus. So in other words, what he's saying is, you were a homosexual, you were effeminate, but now you're, you're washed by the blood of Jesus. You're no longer those things. You're no longer an adulterer. You're no longer a fornicator. You're no longer a thief. See you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I see what you're saying. Okay. So in other, in other words, what he's saying is, yes, a person can be cleansed and be made whole from that, that perversion, because it is perversion. And see, I used to be somebody who might go hard, but now I have more compassion. Now I go out and I, and I, and I have more one-on-ones with them, like I'm doing with you right now. Despite the fact you sent me some perverted stuff like that, I think it's only by the grace of God I could even sit here and talk to you right now. Yeah, I wasn't expecting um, to to talk to you about it like that. Well, just know that Jesus Christ can cleanse you and he can make you whole and he can save you. 
and he can deliver you what the okay. problem is. People don't want that. They worship themselves. So you're going to have to want to want that. And until until you in, until you want to be changed, it's it's he's, God's not going to force it on you. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I just feel like I'm like I just don't feel like that's what I want. So honestly, I don't know if this is if this is constructive. Probably not. I mean, but hey, at least you've been warned. You need to repent and flee from the wrath to come, friend. So that's all I got for you. So may the Lord uh, okay. may the Lord work on.